this video, we're going to create a fancy hamburger menu. You may have seen my previous hamburger menu video. If not, check that one out too. This design was inspired by Frontend Joe and IPEC.UIUX. They created this initially using React, but I'm going to refactor it using just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They have tons of great design and development related content on Instagram. So go check them out. The links are in the description. If you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. So let's get straight into it. We're going to go a little faster than normal and I'll just show you how to code it. So we have three files here, an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript file. Let's create our boilerplate with Emmet. We'll name this Fancy Burger Button. Now we'll add our button. And within the button, we're going to create a span with the class of box. After that, we'll have another span with the class of rectangle, rectangle top, and rectangle small. After that, we'll have another span with the class of rectangle and rectangle middle. And lastly, we'll have another span with the class of rectangle, rectangle bottom, and rectangle small. And that's it for the HTML. Let's add our style sheet and JavaScript files. So now you see we have an empty button. So let's style it. So in our body, we're going to add some padding, and this is just for demonstration purposes to keep everything away from the edges. And we'll target our fancy burger class. We'll add a position of a relative, and then a width of 100 pixels, and a height of 80 pixels, and then a border of zero, background of transparent, outline of none, and cursor pointer. So this is gonna get rid of all the default properties such as the background, the outline, and setting the height and width. And we're making our button relative so that we can absolutely position the elements within it. So next we have our rectangle. We're going to position it absolutely, give it a height of 10 pixels, background of black, border radius of four pixels, and transition the transform at 0.65 seconds. So we have three total rectangles and they all three share these common properties. We also need to target certain rectangles specifically. So next we'll target the rectangle small and we're gonna set the width on these two half, which is 50 pixels. And then we'll target the rectangle top. We'll set the top to zero, left to zero, and transform origin to top left. So we will be rotating these eventually and we want the origin or the pivot point, the anchor to be on the top left. Next, we'll target our rectangle middle. This one's going to have a top of 50% left of zero, a width of 100 pixels, and a transform on the translate Y of negative 50%. So that should put it right in the middle. And so now we need to target our rectangle bottom. For the rectangle bottom, we'll set the bottom to zero, the right to zero, and the transform origin to bottom right. So this is just the exact opposite of the rectangle top. And there we have it. So next we'll target our box, which again is just for demonstration purposes to give you an example of something that you can do. So in the box, we're gonna set this to absolute. We're gonna set the top to 34 pixels, left to 40 pixels, width to 350 pixels, height to 200 pixels, border radius of 33 pixels. Background is gonna be this purpley color. Opacity initially will be zero and the transform scale will be zero. We're also gonna give this a transform origin of top left so that the animation starts at the top left. Then we'll set our transition properties to opacity and transform and the transition duration to 0.65 seconds. All right, and so now we're not going to see anything yet. To make this work, we have to add a little bit of JavaScript. Now the JavaScript is going to be really simple. First, we'll get our button by using document.querySelector, and then we'll target our fancy burger class. Next, we'll use our button to add an event listener, and that's gonna be an on click. Then we'll have an arrow function. Then we'll use the button to query selector all our spans, all of the spans within the button. And then we'll, for each, loop over these with another arrow function, and we have our span, and we're going to select the class list from each span, and we're going to toggle a class that we're going to call open. So now back in our CSS, we need to add this open class. So first we'll target our rectangle top dot open, then we're going to add a transform, and we're going to translate X 17 pixels. We're also gonna rotate it by 45 degrees. And next we'll target the rectangle middle dot open. We're gonna add a transform as well. We're gonna translate on the Y axis, negative 50%, and we're gonna rotate it by a negative 45 degrees. So we're actually not changing this Y translation. If we go back up here, we have translate Y already on this middle rectangle. We need to include it again here because if we didn't include it, then it would go back to its normal setting, which is zero. Next, we'll target our rectangle bottom dot open. 
we're going to transform it as well. We'll translate on the x axis a negative 17 pixels, and we're going to rotate it by 45 degrees. And lastly, we have our box dot open. We're going to set the opacity to one and the transform scale to one. And that will show us the box. All right, so let's save this, and now we can give it a shot. When we click on it, it's going to add the open class, transform into an X, and open the box. When we click it again, it should go back to normal. So if you want to just stop here, it works. But I want to refactor this so that it's easy to adjust. Right now, we just have hard-coded values for all of the elements. So we're going to start out by adding some CSS custom properties or variables so that we can keep track of the values that we're using. So to do that, we'll go up to the top here, and we're going to target our root, and we'll set our variables here. So first, we'll add a button width variable, and we'll set that to 100 pixels. So then let's go down, and let's change everywhere that we have button width. So 100 pixels. So here, we're going to change this to variable button width. If we go back down to rectangle middle, we have the same thing here. So we can replace that with variable button width. Now on the rectangle small, we have it set to 50 pixels, which is half of the button width. So for that, we can use a calc. So we're going to say calculate the variable button width and divide it by two. All right next, we'll go up and we're going to add the variable button height. And button height is only located right here one time. Normally, if a value is only used once, you wouldn't set up a variable for it. Uh, but you'll see why we're going to do that in this instance. So next, we're going to set the rectangle height. That's 10 pixels. And again, this is only used in one spot here on the rectangle. We're going to replace that with the variable rectangle height. And then we have rectangle radius of four pixels. So let's go down and replace that, which is right here. And then we have our transition of 0 0.65 seconds. So we can replace that here and on our box. So let's save this. And now we'll see that everything is still working. So we've moved most of the hard-coded values into custom properties. This makes it a bit easier to change things if needed. But let's say that we want to make the button a little bit smaller. So let's go up here to our variables, and let's say we want the width to be 50 pixels and the height to be 40 pixels. We'll save that, and it looks okay, but once we change into our X, it's not quite working. The width of the lines is too much. It's just a bit off. So let's undo that. How can we fix this? So let's refactor this a bit more and make things calculate from one single value. We're going to do this by making our button width our single source of truth. So our button width is going to remain 100 pixels. Now our button height is exactly 80% of our button width. So we can replace this with a calc function. We'll calculate our variable button width and we'll multiply it by 0.8, which will give us 80% of the button width. And for the rectangle height, it's exactly 10%. So we'll replace this with the same thing, and we're going to calculate it by multiplying it by 0.1, which will give us 10%. Again, with the radius, it's exactly 4%. So we'll calculate it and multiply by 0.04. The transition duration never changes. We'll leave that one as is. So let's save this, and you'll see that it still works. Now let's change this to 50. You'll see that it somewhat looks better. But as we change into an X, it's still a little off. And that is because we still have hard-coded values right here, our 17 pixels. This needs to be a calculated value. So let's go back up here, and we're going to add one more variable. We'll call it translate. And it's, again, going to calculate off the button width. We're going to multiply it by 0.17, which will give us 17% of the button width. So now if we go down here, we can change this 17 to our variable of translate. And this one, though, is a negative 17. So in order to do that, we can add our variable in here. That will give us a positive 17, but we need to make this negative. So in order to do that, we'll need to calculate and multiply it by negative 1 to get a negative value. So let's save that. And now, as we open it, the x looks normal. So now we can go up and just change this one value to whatever it is we need, and it will look perfect. We can go up to 200, and that looks just fine. So now everything updates and keeps the correct ratios. So now you can use this code in your next project and easily adjust it to whatever size you need. So that's going to be it for this video. If this video helped you out, help me out by liking and subscribing if you haven't already for more videos like this.